Okay, so this is my follow-up uh, to my initial kind of mini-review and uh, first impressions that I had for this, uh, the Sony Digital Paper. This is the DPT RP1, so this is the second generation uh, of this device. Um, there's been a fair amount of debate uh, in some of the forums I've been reading about uh, the changes that have been made. Um, I think that a lot of the changes were made from the original uh, kind of, and I guess it was an Android-based operating system is what it seemed to be, to what looks like uh, an operating system that they made from scratch. The idea is I think they're looking for document security. By only being able to load things on and off through the app, you get a lot more control about what goes on here. And though I don't have proof, I think that that's kind of backed up. When you go into the settings here, there's a setting for a control server. And this, and you can add a server. And what happens is there's there's no instructions for this in the manual. This is, I think, a, a pretty much an enterprise option. And instead of using the digital paper app in a big law firm, I think they have a centralized document server. So the only way something gets on and off this device is by an authorized server. So there's no way for anybody to kind of monkey around with the document. So more than just a password control, you're actually controlling the movement of documents on and off. Probably their customers, that's what they wanted. They thought the other device wasn't secure enough. And so I think that that's something that Sony will not change. So the fact that you can't sideload, that you can't mount this as a USB, that you can't connect directly to the cloud, I don't think that option is ever going to change because I think Sony did a lot, you know, it's a lot more work to make it work through this digital paper app and through these control servers than it is just to make it a mountable device and be done with it. So the problem is, in order to get that tight functionality, they couldn't just use the Android base. That's fairly insecure. So they had to start from scratch with a new operating system. And in the process, they basically made it no frills. They didn't, you know, Android, when you build an Android app, there's a lot of things that are built in, back button functionality. It's all programmed in. All you have to do is tell it what to do. If you're building from scratch, if you don't tell it there's a back button, there's no back button. And that's the end of it. So in their quest to make this thing more secure, they made it extremely vanilla. So while they're never going to add, I don't think, cloud functionality um, or you know USB mounting, hopefully they'll get around to fixing the navigation issues. Okay, so all of that aside, all of the you know the wishes and the differences from the other version, you know I've been using it for the past few days, and so I just want to tell you about my experience, kind of as it is, um, the the way it is, um, no wishes. Uh, anymore, no complaining about uh, navigation features. So the reason why I really want to like this device is because of the size of the screen. I mentioned that before. I read a lot of technical documents. Here's a printout of a of a typical paper that I might read. This is the size that it's supposed to be. This is the size that it comes in the journal. And when I come onto here and I look at it, Okay, that's that's the same size. Okay, the text, if I pick this up, you see that that's the same size text. That's what I, I want it to look like. Um, when I look at it on even a an iPad screen, here's an iPad, all right? It's just, it's just that much smaller. You can see next to here. So I've heard a lot of people in the comments and in the forums saying, yeah, get a Remarkable, get a Remarkable. Um, that might be a good device, but and, and that's probably a better device if you want a multifunction tablet, if you want to draw and be able to, to read e-books and things. But this is, you know, this is roughly 10 inches. This is 13 inches. You can see the difference here. It's quite sizable. And again, this, this is the native size. This is how it's supposed to be read. Everything else, you go into that real pain in the neck of zooming and scrolling and zooming and scrolling, trying to read things. I can just pick this thing up, and as everybody says, it is so thin and so light. You can just hold this thing forever and see it the way it's supposed to be on a nice, clear e-ink string screen. That's the problem with the iPad. I look at this right now at the end of the day. I'm 40, okay, my eyes. I get tired. I look at this thing. It's already straining my eyes. I can just look at this thing all day long, and it's a nice, easy to see uh, view. So that's why I want to like this. That's why I want to get this to work because I want a light, fast, easy to use 13 inch e-reader that's gonna let me see the full size of those pages. Okay, so with all that said, um, how have I been getting around? Well, you know what, for the most part, I'm reading pages, the papers that are probably, you know, 10 to 15 pages long. Well, that's 
that's well within the pinch to zoom page pick. And that's pretty easy to navigate. You can just tap what you need. For the most part, that gets it done. I would say that if you're within, you know, the 16 to 32 pages where maybe you only have to swipe over once, you really don't have a problem. It's not that bad. So what about the larger documents? So let's go back to my favorite textbook. Oh, what I do? I missed it here. Stryer Biochemistry. Who can't get enough of this? So if every, if every book, if every document was formatted like this one is, I wouldn't have a problem. And the reason is because every heading here has been linked back to its table of contents. Every chapter, every heading, every subsection, everything has um, a hyperlink. So I can link out, read a couple pages, and if I want to get back to the table of contents, all I have to do is tap on the next section, and I go back. So if they could all be like this, then, well, we wouldn't have any problems. But they're not all like this. So what are your options? Well, one is you do have this little scroll bar up at the top that you can tap on. Now look at this. I'm going from page 20 to page 936. It's going to take it a sec to think. All right, because I just opened this document and it's going to think. But now look at this. I'm going to go from 936. I'm going to go back to 277. Bam. Let's go up to 1025. Bam. How about all the way back? 577. Bam. This thing is instant. I get that little loading circle very occasionally. Usually I can just scan right through. Now this is a 150 megabyte PDF. It's got 127 pages, lots of figures. Every picture, every page has some kind of picture on it. And it is just screaming through it. I can I can barely use it that fast on the desktop. I have never had an e-reader that can scan through this quickly. So scanning through and flipping pages, no matter where you are, the only reason you're gonna miss a page is because you missed the gesture. You're not it's not because this thing didn't didn't register it. The processor in here is nothing short of amazing and how well it can handle. Okay, so what if we don't have a document that is that well set up? All right, well, if we look at another typical book, well, I keep doing return the document. If I look at another book that I might be trying to use, yes, this one has absolutely no... This one has absolutely no um, navigation functions. Its table of contents is absolutely static. Let's get to it here. Everything is dead. Dead links. But you know what? This kind of book, I'm probably just going to read it straight through. And I might skip a chapter. But this isn't really a reference manual. This is an information book. So I probably don't really care too much. At least it remembers, as you saw when I opened it, it remembers where you left it. So it'll leave you in the last place that you were And a lot of these types of books if you're not skipping around. Now, is that kind of a cheat? I suppose. But again, this is the way I use it. And so for a lot of these books, I don't need to navigate around. So let's go to the other scenario where I may need to navigate around and have a table of contents. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go into this manual. Now, this manual is only what, say 15, 16, 17 pages long. So this is actually one that I could probably pinch to Zoom and get through pretty easily. So there's the first page, there's the second page, I can get through it. But I just want to use it as an example because what this is a typical document that is going to have a hyperlinked table of contents, right? So I can hyperlink and get to my page, but this is where we have the navigation problem. There's no back button. There's no way for me to get back to the table of contents. Now, again, because this is short, I can do the pinch and swipe. But on a larger document, that wouldn't be reasonable. So there is a workaround, and it has to do with the stupidest feature that I never thought I would actually use, but it's those dumb symbols. So if I draw that silly little star symbol right there, then what I can do is I can go up here, and under search, I can search mark, 
from the beginning, search for that silly star, and I can look. And lo and behold, there's my table of contents page. So I can tap it, and it's going to take me back. Now I can navigate to a different section. It's going to take me there. And when I hit that glass again, it's going to remember what I did last time. So I'll be able to punch that up. Now, is that a great design? No. Does that get the job done? Yeah, it does. Um, if, I, if I have a hyperlink table of contents, I can mark it with a star and I can get back to it pretty easily. Not as easy as a back button, but it's not too hard of a navigation. So that's a decent workaround. Um, an even stranger workaround, so there is no way to directly enter in um, a page number and go to it. But depending on the type of document that you're working with, in this case, I can do search text. Say I'm going to go to page 11. Well, I can search page 11. And if it's typed on your on the page number, it's page 13, but what happens is when you pick this up, down there is my page 11, okay? So that may or may not always work. If you're in some math-heavy textbook, you're probably going to run into, and low numbers like that, it won't work. But say you're trying to find page 235. Well, depending what you're looking at, there may not be too many instances of 2, 3, 5 right next to each other, and your list would probably be manageable to search through. Again, is it great? No. Is it a good design? No. Is it an okay workaround? Yeah, it can get the job done. Most of the papers I'm looking at are these short guys right here. Not necessarily looking at the long stuff. So the few times that I have to dig into a manual that I really need to flip around, I can use these navigation marks, I can use the search tool, and get it done. So at the end of the day, I suppose it's not that bad. So a couple other things, just to conclude that I've been playing around with, because I have a nice big screen. Uh, you know, comics, hey. Manga are fine on the smaller size, but if you have a comic book that comes in a larger format, you know, it just it looks really good on here. So that's that's not why I'd get it, and I would not recommend spending $700 on this thing to read magazines and comics. Um, I would do it for somebody who is generally printing things out. But as a, hey, I've got this thing, what else can it do? Um, it does a pretty good job of those. So just to basically wrap up, um, you know, Sony had, I think, their, their kind of business customer base made them make some changes in file handling um, that required them to change the underlying operating system. And when they did that, they just kind of went with the no-frills route. Hopefully, they will update it to give us direct page access, to give us our table of contents back. But in the meantime, I found enough workarounds, and I have just realized that with just the way that I use it, that I don't, I don't really think uh, I'm going to have a long-term problem with it. Even if Sony doesn't make a single update um, for the way I use it, it's usable. Now, if you like doing a lot of e-reading, if you do plan on using mostly large textbooks, that could start to be a problem. Um, if how you load documents, there are some people who are absolutely adamant that they must have um, access to the cloud, that they don't have access to a computer to load their documents. I, that's going to be a non-starter. And as I said, I don't think Sony's going to change that. I think that that's really the reason that this was built this way was for that kind of document security. So those kind of workflows are going to be out of luck. Um, but if you can sync to your computer, if you think of it more as a printer and the fact that they include it as a print driver, I think kind of is supposed to drive that home. If you think of it as more of a printer for your computer that just makes it easier to see and that you can take a, a stack of papers with you, but not really for on the on the go you know, handling and, and adding of papers, um, then you're kind of seeing what Sony's vision is for this. And if that's not your vision, that's not your vision. If that doesn't work for you, it's not going to work for you. Um, and if you're not using large documents and you don't have old eyes like mine, um, something 10 inch like the Remarkable might might do the trick or maybe the, the Onyx. Um, I had a, an N96 before and had all kinds of problems with that. And I think it's, you get to a point where you try to do too much with those things and they start bogging down and, and getting kind of janky and laggy and stuff. This thing is so lightning fast, so smooth. I've never seen anything handle PDFs as fast as this thing can. Um, and it, it's so good and it's so light. So for me, it's just being able to take those papers. That's, that's what it, it really hits home for me. So I think I'm going to be keeping this. I'll let you know maybe in a couple more weeks if I have any major problems or anything like that. Um, but for me, I, I think that there's enough to, of work around that we can do with these. Um, it's going to work for me. So I love it. Thumbs up. 
If you're a graduate student, I highly recommend investing in one of these things. You're going to use it your entire career uh, and you're going to save yourself a lot of hassle and a lot of digging through file cabinets. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.